I'd like to start my talk with a disclaimer. This is a very unashamedly one-sided presentation. The other side of the argument is constantly played out in the media. If you do feel the need to hear the other side of the argument, please play it very quietly in your internal monologue as I go along. When people think of CCTV or surveillance, the image that sums up surveillance, most of them, is the CCTV camera. I'm going to talk to you today about those cameras, but obviously this is just a part of the surveillance state that is all around us. CCTV, though, is an issue that is particularly interesting because it is so representative of what we are up against in general. I hope by the end of my talk you'll get an idea of this. CCTV is yet another lie in a long list of lies sold to the general public. CCTV, CCTV has been sold as a tool for crime prevention, crime detection, and crime clear-up. But it's all a lie. Hundreds of millions of pounds of public money has been wasted on this lie, and much more is set to be wasted in the future unless we halt the expansion of the surveillance state. In the late 1990s, more than 75% of Home Office crime prevention budget was spent on CCTV. It is estimated there are around 4.2 million surveillance cameras in the UK, which puts us at the number one position in the global league table for the ratio of cameras to people. We have a camera for every 14 people. 20% of the world's cameras watching 1% of the world's population. Yet, only 2.4% of the British public has a criminal record, and a minuscule 0.6% of Britons have received a custodial sentence for committing a criminal offence. Now, the UK has no codified, formally codified, constitution. But our way of life, for hundreds of years, has had at its core certain principles of common law and equity. The principle that you are free to do anything that isn't specifically legis legislated against, or more correctly, isn't unlawful, and the fundamental legal principle of innocent until proven guilty. In recent years, we've seen these fundamental principles eroded by the introduction of illiberal laws and the increasing use of surveillance technologies such as CCTV. Anonymity is not a crime. In fact, English common law is built upon the right to anonymity implicit in the right to walk down the street unchallenged provided you are not doing something unlawful. Surveillance cameras present a serious threat to privacy and civil liberties. And the alleged trade-offs of safety or security are unproven and vastly outweighed by the risks of creating a police state. We are being asked to trust that the state will not misuse its powers, whilst the state refuses to trust us as it expands its surveillance and treats us all as suspects. But if you've done nothing wrong, you've got nothing to fear, right? That suggests that law-abiding citizens do not need or deserve their right to privacy. Surely law-abiding citizens deserve privacy the most. <laughs> so what have the politicians traded our freedoms for? CCTV must work, right? Well, let's look at some of the many studies into CCTV some funded or commissioned by the Home Office. Home Office Police Research Group 1992 found that public acceptance is based on a limited and partly inaccurate knowledge of the functions and capabilities of CCTV, and that respondents referred to television programmes such as Crime Watch as their source of information about CCTV. University of Wales Violence Research Group, Cardiff 1999, found in a study that this study provides no evidence of a deterrent effect. Local government studies 1999 found that CCTV may actually undermine the natural surveillance in towns and communities. The result may be a further spiral of social fragmentation and atomization, which leads to more alienation and even more crime. Home Office Study 252, 2002, 
it was found that CCTV had no effect on violent crimes from five studies. Cambridge Evaluation of the Effects of CCTV on Crime, 2007. The Cambridge Evaluation is consistent with prior research in showing no significant desirable effect of CCTV on crime in city centres. In September 2007, members of the Greater London Assembly produced a breakdown of London boroughs, the number of cameras in each, compared to the crime clear-up rates. When plotted on a graph, as you can see here, you'll see that the statistics show there is no correlation between the number of cameras and the crime clear-up rate. In fact, in four out of five of the boroughs with the most cameras, they had the record of solving crime that was below average. The Campbell Collaboration Report into CCTV 2008, part funded by the National Policing Improvement Agency. The evaluation of CCTV schemes in city and town centres and public housing did not have a significant effect on crime. The Oxford Policing Policy Forum report, Too Much Surveillance 2008, found Britain is in danger of becoming a society where everyone is effectively on parole. Home Office Study 292 2005 found it would be easy to conclude from the information presented in this report that CCTV is not effective. The majority of the schemes evaluated did not reduce crime. And even where there was a reduction, this was mostly not due to CCTV. Nor did CCTV schemes make people feel safer, much less change their behaviour. Clearly, this isn't the conclusion the Home Office wanted. So an extra line was added to these concluding remarks. That, however, would be too simplistic a conclusion. <laughs> what is the point of doing research if you are going to disregard its conclusions? But disregarding the research against CCTV is all too common. In June 2008, Prime Minister Gordon Brown gave a speech to the Institute of Public Policy Research about security and liberty. He said, in central Newcastle, after CCTV was installed, burglaries fell by 56%, criminal damage by 34% and theft by 11%. Gordon Brown took these figures from Home Office Study 252. If we look a bit closer at Home Office Study 252, we find that it says that CCTV had an undesirable effect in Newcastle. The reason why they say this is because crime did fall by 21.6% in the area with cameras, but it fell by 29.7% in the area without cameras. Not a single journalist reported this fact. But then disregarding inconvenient facts is not that uncommon either. In Oxford, the Oxford Mail reported on the 19th of April this year, two months after cameras were installed in East Oxford, uh, on a report called Cowley Road Crime Falls Under CCTV's Gaze, they said, figures obtained by the Oxford Mail under the Freedom of Information Act showed that there were 150 crimes on the Cowley Road in the first two months of operation. That was a drop from 166 over the same time last year. Well, we got hold of that Freedom of Information request and found that some crimes went up. Those included possession of firearms, racially aggravated criminal damage to a vehicle, theft from a vehicle, theft or unauthorised taking of a bicycle, shoplifting, a fray and administering a substance with intent. So what quote did the media choose to represent this? They spoke to Jan Bartlett, a local trader, who completely disregarding the crimes that went up said, the results are better than we could have imagined. Our area is now safer for my staff and all members of the public than to the tops using Mansell Gardens play area, where the fall in used needles and condoms, as well as the improved crime statistics, has improved the quality of life. So, the successes are massively overstated, the failures are disregarded, and where CCTV shouldn't even be part of a strategy, it has become the strategy. In 2007, the Home Office and the Association of Chief Police Officers published a national CCTV strategy that lays out an agenda for the future of CCTV. In that strategy, they stated, anecdotal evidence suggests that over 80% of the CCTV footage supplied to the police is far from ideal. So, did the strategy suggest rolling back this costly failed experiment? 
Far from it. Recommendation 44 states, promote CCTV and its expansion by forming evidence-based business cases. The strategy calls for more advanced CCTV, but every technological advance further erodes freedoms of the public. Increasingly, we see police criticising CCTV, but such criticism is being used to upgrade the surveillance cameras. The cycle goes something like this. Convince the public CCTV works. Install the systems. Admit it doesn't work. Upgrade the systems, promising it will work this time. Repeat ad infinitum.